Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Dev video. In today's episode, we will be building my brand new gaming PC. If you're interested in the same build or a similar one, check out the link below and see our offerings. Let's get into it. All right, so as always, our first step here is going to be getting the motherboard prepped. So we're gonna open up this box, pull our new motherboard out here. Under this tray here are a bunch of accessories, uh, you know, your Wi-Fi, uh, cables, front panel headers, everything like that. Uh, we're not going to need any of that for now. Alrighty, so this is an AM5 build, as you can see here, by the X670 chipset and the Ryzen processor. LGA socket. Uh, there's no more pins on the CPU, so there's less risk on the CPU during installation, more risk on the motherboard. So you want to make sure you line it up correctly as to not damage anything. And set the CPU, bo CPU box aside. Uh, these used to have coolers in them. Nowadays, most modern processors don't come with coolers. All right, and you'll notice this kit here. This is the AM5 secure frame. We're also gonna pull this out right now. We're gonna be using this in place of the standard mounting mechanism here. Uh, very similar to the LGA uh, 1700 securing bracket. This just helps a little bit with temperatures, looks a little bit better, uh, but the main reason I chose to go with it is the temperature benefit there. So you will have to use the included screws in here, uh, not these ones as they are not long enough. Uh, you are gonna retain the stock back plate that's already behind the motherboard. You're just gonna remove this socket here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install the CPU first. Uh, so you're just gonna push down on this retention bar here, pull it back and then pull the socket cover up and away. Hold it like that there. We're gonna go ahead and open up our CPU. And you're gonna notice there is a triangle right here. It's also gonna be a triangle on the inside of the socket right there. So we're gonna line those two up. Line it up, drop it in. I like to give it just a little wiggle just to make sure it's in there. Now that our pins are nice and covered, we're gonna open up this toolkit here. Now it is important to note that normally you don't have to do this if you're going with the retention plate. Uh, without the retention plate, you could just close the CPU retention mechanism, be perfectly fine. Uh, but this is how you would install that new thermal right CPU contact frame. All right, so we're just gonna pull that away. I uh, do keep this as well as this cover here. If you ever need to RMA the motherboard, if it stops working, you're gonna need, of course, both those things right there. So we're gonna line up our new plate just like that. We're gonna drop our screws into place and then come back in and tighten them. I recommend doing this in a cross pattern just to make sure the CPU makes perfect contact with everything. Uh, even if you mount the CPU uneven, it, it could still boot, but it could give you, you know, unseen PCIe slots or memory instabilities or unseen memory channels. Uh, that's why it's important to make sure that it is mounted correctly with the correct pressure and the correct orientation. And we're good to go. So that's our contact plate installed. I'm gonna go ahead and put this CPU uh, contact frame back in the box. We're gonna go ahead and install the RAM and the storage. So I'm gonna start with the RAM here with 64 gigs of 6,000 megahertz RAM right here. I chose to go with the T-Force T-Create kit mostly because it matches my color scheme here, even though you most likely will not be able to see any of this once we get the CPU cooler installed. Okay, so on this board here, as it's labeled, uh, we're gonna go ahead and use A2 and B2. So this channel and this channel of RAM. And once you hear those two little clicks, that means the RAM is fully installed and you're good to go. And there we are. That's our 64 gigs of RAM installed. All right, so now we're moving on to the storage. First thing you're gonna have to do is remove these covers so you can actually access the M.2 slots. Uh, just using a normal Phillips head screwdriver to get these guys off. Uh, so the top slot here, this one is going to be a PCIe Gen 5. That's where our fast drive is going to go, this top crucial T7000. Uh, the rest of these Gen 4 PCIe SSDs are going to go in the other slots. Uh, it doesn't really matter the order because they're all Gen 4 slots and they're all Gen 4 drive. Here we go. So our T7000 is gonna go up here. Uh, PCIe 5.0 drives do get extremely hot. So you wanna make sure you get all these thermal pads off. Uh, they're gonna need it. Do not peel these stickers off. They're actually copper and they are thermal conductors. So this actually helps keep the drive very cool. So we're gonna slot it in. It is keyed, it'll only go in one way. And then using the new Asus Toolless M.2 uh, mounting system, we're just gonna slide that 90 degrees. 
And don't forget to peel this top thermal pad off here as well. Very important to keep that drive cool. And we're just gonna install this cover right back where it was and screw it down. And we're gonna repeat that same process uh, for the rest of the three drives in this system. Now that we've got the four terabyte PCIe 4.0 drives installed, we're gonna make sure we peel off All right, so that's our motherboard almost completely assembled. There's one more step we have to do. On this motherboard is install uh, the CPU cooler here. So the very first step is to remove these stock AM4 slash AM3 mounting brackets. Uh, again, keep these with your motherboard just in the event for some reason you have to RMA it or in the future if you ever sell it. For our case, we're just gonna put those aside right now. I went with the AK620 dark CPU cooler just to keep with the all black theme here. I wanted no RGB. I wanted also an air cooler that is going to be super reliable versus a water cooler and perform on par. So these are some extra clips here that we're gonna use for that third rear fan. I'm gonna take out the hardware and bracketry set here. A couple important things to note here. Uh, we will have to go ahead and remove the center fan in order to get this guy installed. Uh, to do so, there are clips, two clips on either side. All you have to do is pull backwards. And I know that that fan is disconnected. We're just gonna pull it upwards. And set it aside. Okay, so we're not gonna use the included thermal paste. Went ahead and picked up some Arctic MX-6. Uh, I used the MX-5 for a long time, was very happy with it, had no issues, especially longevity wise. It just never got crusty and hard on me. So we're gonna go ahead and give the new MX-6, claims to be a better thermal conductor, a try here. Uh, so I'm gonna give this just a nice line all the way down. I'm gonna give it two little dots down here. The reason I'm gonna do that is the CCDs right here and right here. So those are the two hottest areas of the CPU. Now, given this is a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, there's only one of them, uh, but it does have that 3DB cache, so it does get very hot. So you wanna make sure uh, that you have proper contact right here. So the next thing we're gonna do before we install the CPU cooler is to see this big sticker here. If you don't remove that, you're gonna have a bad time. Blocks the actual contact between the cold plate here on the CPU cooler and the CPU die. All right, so now that we've gotten that rear sticker taken off we're gonna pull out the bracketry we need here uh, there is an instruction manual in here if you've never mounted one of these before as well as a very long screwdriver uh, additionally there's actually a fan splitter here uh, this is useful if you're using the stock two fans uh, it's also useful just to have for any other case fans so that's a good thing to have around all right so now that we've got our cpu hardware here we're gonna go ahead and take these standoff uh, you're gonna notice there's a plastic bit here and a metal thumb bit here plastic always goes downwards towards the motherboard so we're gonna thread those on. Uh, this is what holds the back plate to the motherboard. And then this CPU cooler mounts to it using some bracketry here. Uh, you don't have to go super, super crazy tight on these. Honestly, finger tight is more than enough because this is not what's actually making contact with your CPU here. It's just what's holding everything to the board. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and place these little brackets on. Holes that are labeled D are the ones we're gonna use for AM5 here. Orient the brackets as shown and take these included thumb nuts here and screw these in. So now the cooler is officially ready to go on. these two screws in the center with the two standoffs on those two brackets we just installed. This is actually a be quiet one from one of my previous builds. Perfect. And the reason we're doing this is to make sure that the mounting pressure is even on the CPU so the thermal paste doesn't all come out one side. You got even contact and pressure there. All right, so that's our CPU cooler installed. Uh, all we're gonna do now is install our remaining fans and putting them in on the orientation that I prefer. The reason I'm changing that is to make sure that this wire runs out facing that way. There we go. Get it lined up, clip on one side where we want it, and 
and make sure it's level and clip on the other side. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and unbox this other fan and fan clips here. There we are. So again, we're gonna want this wire running out that way. We're only gonna need two of the included four in this extra kit I bought. So the other ones you can save for another build and pull these forward. There's one side. And there is that third fan mounted. So that is our board completely assembled. There's only one peel to do on this motherboard, thankfully. But we're gonna go ahead and plug in all of these fan headers here. Uh, we're gonna use this included splitter for sure. So we're gonna plug this one into the CPU fan header. Uh, it is gray, that's how you can kind of differentiate it here. One of these fans we're gonna plug into CPU optional. Uh, in the BIOS, we're gonna configure these to run at the same speed, so it won't necessarily matter. And that is all of those wires plugged in and ready to go. All right, so now that we've got the board fully assembled, it's ready to go in the case, uh, minus a few things here. Uh, so I've got our power supply cables here. I'm gonna go ahead and take out our CPU plugins here. Just pre-route them in the motherboard. It's easier to do now versus later, uh, especially since it gets pretty tight up here. So if you plug these in, it makes it a lot easier on yourself later on. Uh, this extra cable here, uh, this is actually a PCIe connector. That's gonna go on the right-hand side of our board. I'll show you. Uh, this is for our front panel 90 watt charging that's going to be that type c port there supports up to 90 watts so it needs that extra power there okay so the first thing we're going to plug in going to be on this side here right next to the 24 pin uh, is the six pin uh, pass through or the type c connector just to give it 90 watt charging all right so we're just going to plug these six in let that cable hang i'm going to rotate the board a little bit more here just so you guys can see and right here on the top side of the board is going to be the two eight pins for the cpu connectors the eps pins uh, we're going to go ahead and plug these in. Now all we have to do is lower the motherboard into the case and get it screwed in. All right, so I'm gonna slowly feed this board in, uh, lining up these rear panel connectors here with the back side of the case, just like so. First thing, I'm just gonna cram this cable through here. Again, this front cable here is that 90 watt pass through for that type C. Helps with VR headsets, just charging your phone, tablet, whatever you have nearby. Uh, but it is a nice feature of this uh, Asus ProArt board. But I'm gonna take these two eight pin connections here and feed them through this hole right here. All right, there's one, and let's get that second one going here. Alrighty, there we are. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is fully line up the motherboard now that we've got those eight pins routed. It's gonna be on the back of the case here. Uh, you'll see it pop through, and your standoffs will line up all around the motherboard, as well as the center one here. You don't actually put a screw in that one. It just holds the board in place so it doesn't go anywhere. There we go. And each of these holes where the standoffs are, uh, just a little bit past finger tight will be good enough to make sure that these are fully secure. That's the motherboard fully installed. So next we're gonna install our fans. So at the front as intake and the rear as exhaust, we went with four of the Silent Wings Pro 4 120 mil. And then for two exhaust front, we went with two 140 mil Silent Wings uh, Pro 4 as well. So I'm gonna flip the case around. We're gonna start with the rear exhaust fan here. All right, so this is our rear 120 here, this Be Quiet Pro 4. Uh, these do have three variable max RPMs. I believe it is 1200, 1600, or no, 2000, and then 3000. So I'm gonna leave them at 1200 because I want these to be very quiet. And we're gonna install this guy with fan lead upward. There we go. So we're gonna install the fan like this. If you see the blades and there's no grill, I call this, we call this the grill right here. Uh, this means it is intaking air from this side and this is where the air exits. So we're gonna take our four screws here, the self-threading ones, and screw them in the back side of this fan here. It's our rear exhaust fan installed. So we're gonna repeat that process on the two exhaust fans up here and the three intake fans here.
Could be a relay, could be a few. All right, so now that we've got all of our fans installed here, we've got some wiring to do. Starting with the front panel HD audio, which I've already pre-routed here. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in. It is keyed, it will only go in one way. The front panel USB 3.0. Again, it is also keyed, it will only go in one way. Like so the front panel type C connector right there, gonna plug in. This one will give a nice snap if it is oriented the correct way, which that one fortunately did not snap, but it did go in the right way. Careful, it's a bit of a fragile connector as well as the USB 3.0. I want to make sure you line those up correctly before you force anything in. Uh, you don't want to damage either the housing or the connector. Uh, the next ones we have, front panel connectors here. I refer to your motherboard manual, depending on each model, can be slightly different, uh, but they go on these bottom pins under my finger right there. All right, so that's our front panel connectors connected down there. All right, so we're going to finish up some wiring on this main board as well here. Uh, this is a USB 2.0 to a uh, micro B that's going to go to the power supply. Uh, this on this MSI Mag uh, MPG 1300 watt power supply. Uh, this is going to give us accurate real-time readouts of power draw, temperature, fan speed, everything like that. Uh, again with USB 2.0, it's keyed. There's a dead pin right there. It's only going to go in one way in one of these headers down here. All right, so now that we've got it plugged in, we're just going to go ahead and route it through this little cable management hole right here, and we'll pull it through the back and tidy it up once we flip the case back over. All right, and one more thing to do on this side for now is gonna be the main 24 pin for this motherboard here. So you can see there are two different types of connectors here. This is the 24 pin, and then this is the power supply side, the one that's split. So we're gonna plug the 24 pin into its home right next to our PCIe 6 pin that provides that 90 watts of power for the front panel type C. There we go. And this cable, we're just gonna feed through to the back as well here. All right, so we've got that 24 pin all routed and ready to go. All right, so last step on this side here, we're gonna go undo these three PCIe slot covers here on the back uh, to make room for our RTX Founders Edition 4090. We're gonna need these screws we used on the back covers here that we took off uh, to secure the 4090 in place. We're gonna take this heavy card here, come in going front in first, just like that slotting it in there she goes all right so a little tip here for your graphics card installation always push upwards right here and backwards and start on the bottom and work your way up on these screws here keep the card from sagging especially over time uh, these new cards are very heavy and it can wear out your case as well as your PCIe slot if you're not very careful about what you're doing a lot of people recommend support brackets I think they're kind of ugly so I won't be using one uh, but yeah whatever you You'd like to use to help combat a GPU sag is always recommended. Last screw going in up top here. Our included PCIe 5.0 cable, as you can see, it's labeled for 600 watts there. And either side of this can go into the graphics card. So I'm gonna use this one here. Make sure it's in just so we don't get any fires later. And there we are, that's this side all done. Let's move on to the back, get the cable management all tidied up and install the power supply. All right, since this is my personal build and I know I'm gonna be ripping it apart and probably upgrading or changing something in the next few months, I'm not gonna go super crazy on cable management, but as you can see, there aren't too many cables anyways, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and connect our three front fans to this fan splitter here. and our three rear fans to this fan splitter here as well. All right, all right, so we're gonna install our power supply now. To do so, we're gonna take off these two captive screws on the rear here, take this plate and attach it to the back of our power supply using the four mounting points here, here, and here. All right, so we've got our power supply here. There we are. We're gonna take our four included power supply screws. Uh, these came with the power supply. You can use the ones that come with the case. Either way, all were the same. All right, we're gonna take this power supply and slide it on in. Go. And I usually do it with the case standing up and you have gravity helping you instead of fighting you. There's that power supply installed. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug in all of our cables here. So I'm gonna start with the 24 pin because it is the deepest cable and the hardest to reach. Uh, this one's gonna go in first here, just like that. Followed by the other eight pins. We're gonna plug in that fancy little sense cable that's gonna tell us soft how much power we're drawing, what temperature everything's at, where we are in the 
efficiency curve, everything like that. All right, the next thing I'm gonna plug in here, the PCIe 8 pin. All right, there's that in. And then we're gonna plug in our two CPU EPS 8 pins down here as well. So there's one at the top here, as well as one at the bottom. And then finally, we're gonna plug in our 600 watt PCIe 5.0 cable, just like so. We're gonna put that back panel on and we're all done. No back panel bulge, no issues. Alrighty, so the last thing to do is turn it on. If I can find the power button, there we are. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And with the help of the community, we'll make sure to assist you. If you saw any parts or tools you need in the video, check us out at techdep.com or click the link in below for mail-in repairs, custom pieces, builds, laptops, anything you want. We'll get it for you. See you guys on the next episode.